Welcome everybody to another episode of Nomad Land. It's a beautiful sunny Thursday in Orange County, California. As usual, we have a special guest, but before we get to him, it's your host Yaya, my beautiful co-host Erfan, and the wonderful Cash. I'm yo, here. yo, yo, what's, what's up, up, what's up? We got my brother, my good friend, Sammy Beggy, Sammy. superstar, singer. <laughs> Hello, Hello everybody. Here. Gave us some of his time today. Thank you, man. Yeah. With pleasure. With pleasure, yeah. my brother. It's, it's <laughs> always a pleasure to be here with you. Good to have you, man. We just got back from Sammy's house. We were kind of in the studio listening to some beats. I was playing him some of my new stuff. He played some of his new shit. And uh, we're definitely going to be working on some projects. Yeah, it's happy to have you back in the in the game. <laughs> <laughs> good to be back, good. man. Yeah. Believe me. Believe me. The game's been missing you. Yeah. Give up. Give. I never fell for that goodbye anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I was telling him today. I was like, I, I, I never fell for it anyway. Yeah, yeah. Uh, how long was the goodbye for? Well, uh, before I get to that, I want to say something <laughs> he was saying earlier, funny. Um, he, he shared my album when the album came out, mm -hmm. and then nobody said at the bottom, like, I don't believe it. You know, this yeah. is not gonna be real. <laughs> He's like, I should repost that. You know. Yeah, I'm gonna, time. I'm gonna repost that when, the, when your new, new stuff comes yeah. out. <laughs> um, it's been a year and a half, but. There was a long period before that that I didn't write new songs, so it's kind of more like a two and a half years. I, g I gave the news about it saying goodbye, but then it took a while for the album to get finished, and you know, mm. yeah. And now we have Sammy here. Now we have Sammy. I was here, G man. Give, give the best version of your introduction for Sammy right now. That wasn't good enough, the previous one. <laughs> 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 my brother, my good friend, superstar, singer-songwriter, Sammy Vega. I mean, like, people know. People know yeah, we go, we, we go way back, me and Erfan, actually. Uh, we, started, we started out uh, almost at the same time. Like, when, when I moved here, he was one of the first people I even met in yeah. L.A. So, <clears throat> and later on, we started working on, on stuff together. But it was just like my introduction to uh, California was with a few friends and uh, yeah, yeah. With Erfan and Baba Gusuri and... Mm. We all got together and it was just a good, just a good vibe, and that's this is like it shows why why we're still hanging together, you know, yeah, because yeah. everything was well on a good good energy level, and we're still. Is this where your base is at, California? Yeah, lately, yes. Shani? Yes, um, I, w I went back to Europe for a week, for a year, um, had some stuff there, um, but I'm I'm back now in OC, just mm. just chilling. Really? No <laughs> yeah. tour scheduled yet. Uh, the tour, well, actually, this year was a little bit low. Um, because of what's going on in the world, so mm. um, I've been just more focused on myself lately to just figure out what's going on and just to to, to get a new direction in the music. So um, just taking in a lot of stuff. So I'm sure it'll help the music a lot. Yeah, well, I yeah, think. for sure. That's kind of exciting, man. I like it when artists take a little time off and then come back. Yeah, actually, I I, I usually do that anyways, with, with between songs, to, just to get the feedback. You know, mm. I never like release too many songs at once because I I need to grow with the people. You know, mm -hmm. exactly. So, um, but now lately it's been a lot, and my fans are really on my back <laughs> I about, bet, about it. Yeah, I get yeah. like hate mails. <laughs> it, it's just like Earth. <laughs> it, it, you have your own voice, you have your own place, and the game misses you. And it's usually hard for like a pop star to have that place, but you have it, and like it's. It's a you have a beautiful place in the music industry, in my opinion, because you do it so clean. Yeah, I'm very fortunate about that actually, because I never had the need of being out there. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. My personality has never been like that. I that never desperate energy. You know, I never had the need of doing anything. So if I did it, it's because I thought that it's time or like I was comfortable with it. You know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I never yeah, liked the sure. scene. I never liked to be in, in in the eye too much. Right. So that's like the role that I've been taking subconsciously mm -hmm. and. Somehow I like it too, you know, just to be in the dark and then when you're ready, you can do something that matters. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. That's kind of where I'm at too right now. Uh, but I'm in the other side of the cycle. We're talking about the cycle, like being writing music yeah. is like a cycle. Sometimes you're just super motivated and passionate about it and, you know, you keep getting ideas and creativities blooming, but sometimes it kind of slows down. So um, now um, you mentioned you've, ta you've been taking some time off, like uh -huh. just to kind of focus on yourself. What are the things that you're doing in terms of self-care or just expanding the mind? Yeah, I'm actually doing a lot of research. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm learning a lot, like I've, like what we talked about before. So it's just like I'm doing a lot of research and I'm trying to widen my view. You know, just I'm trying to look for the meaning when they say that we don't mean anything in the universe and this. I want to see why it is. Like, do we really mean anything or not? You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Is it 
So there's these kind of stuff that's helping me with my personal life too, and even with the music, you know. So mm -hmm. when I when I do all this research, that it, I only come back to this that everything we do has so much meaning, so much more than we think. An impact, yeah. Yeah. So we have to be careful. <laughs> you mm -hmm. know what I mean? Yeah. So um, that's why, like, even ab about like leaving the house or like being too much, like if you put yourself out there. If you're in a car crash, some somehow you put yourself out there. You know what? Why did you even go out? Right. Did you really need to, need to go out? You know, mm -hmm. these these are the things I, I I think about. And throughout my career, it's been like that. You know, I I think if I'm in the place right now that I'm happy, it's because of all the sacrifices I made mm -hmm. earlier on. Mm -hmm. That I would didn't put myself out there because if I had done it, then whatever could have happened to me, and mm -hmm. I yeah. I couldn't have been in any other place. Mm -hmm. and, that was my own fault, you know? Yeah. So are you messing with psychedelics or going to the nature or anything of that sort? Because that always goes along the lines of expanding the mind and really, I'm too, purpose seeking. Uh, mm -hmm. um, I've, uh, it's, I'm, I've lived a, I lived a normal, normal life like anybody else. I've dealt with a lot of stuff. I've dealt, dealt with addiction in my life. So I've been there, done that. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? So um, what... I First really of all, respect to you for talking about that. No, yeah, yeah. of course, of course. It's and somebody in your statue, man, because I, you know, like, yeah, you're homies with us, but I realize what you are to people, and the fact that you have the balls to talk about that, I respect. Oh, that. of course, mm -hmm. I'm very proud of that. Yeah. This was I didn't even sure. think you were gonna go there, but yeah, hell, you just yeah. opened up this door. Yeah, because you talked about <laughs> psychedelics, and like, you, these are the, like, you, you talked about like all the different methods that people use to get somewhere mm -hmm. in meditation, in like in consciousness, mm -hmm. but. Um, I've been the, what, I, what I mean about being been there done that then I I just being sober just got me realizing of our power our own power how more much more powerful it is and actually frightens me I get sometimes I get scared mm -hmm. you know what I mean because so, now I realize that um, some substances like some, some stuff that we take like we're drinking right now it just numbs a lot of senses well, when mm -hmm. you have those senses it's k kind of freaky when you know like mm -hmm. you know yeah, what i mean yeah. absolutely so, clarity yeah. is probably the biggest high we can actually get exactly but sometimes so I'm, I'm messing with that right now a little i love bit. that yeah i'm messing it. with that a little bit good to hear that man <laughs> definitely yeah. and it works it works you know it could be challenging it could be challenging because you have relapses yeah you have relapses. anything anything can give you a sign for you to get back to your comfort zone mm -hmm. yeah you know what i mean it could be a small thing it could be a big thing it can be nothing <laughs> you can just just get bored and get back to yeah. you and i bet it's coming with cutting a lot of people off and just oh. negative energy of oh. all a sorts lot. a lot mm -hmm. a lot a lot close people yeah yeah i mean especially as artists or as musicians when you're used to uh drinking or smoking or something while you on your music because that has such a deep connection to you they always associate the two together and sometimes a lot of artists when they quit they can't write anymore or you know the music kind of gets messed up you know that happens to a lot of people too, but that's but, about the yeah. journey you know you, you nobody nobody will nobody will give up anything that they're used to with without a fight yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know yeah you, you fight yourself every day you know yeah but for me it's been like um even our early on in the days when we that it's about the, it's about the time you spend alone you know what I mean? Absolutely. You will never get into any of these conclusions by being talk, even talking to people. You know, yeah. you, have, you yeah. have to talk to people. You get their input. Even you go to therapy, you get input. But the real lesson you learn is when you're alone. Alone. Yeah. yeah. So because of the my, my lifestyle, you you know, because I moved to, to, to the States and I came to, to California, I didn't know anybody. So I had to be alone. And because I was getting into the business, I couldn't really hang out with everybody. Mm -hmm. So it was a lot of lonely time, lonely time, lonely time. And then... It got worse because then we got famous. Yeah, yeah. And then you got the fame and you got the, all the things that you're expecting from society and you can't go out there anyways. You know, mm -hmm. you still have to be. So you're this per persona that people look up to and talk about. But mm -hmm. in your loneliness, you're just this lonely person. That, such a big contrast. Oh, yeah, yeah it is. Exactly. Oh, yeah. It's a huge contrast. It is. Yeah. Yeah, Especially just, for us. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, just from the comments I see sometimes on my photos on Instagram. Like I might be at work, I'm at a house, you know, nice house, because I, I I do real estate. You know, I take a photo and the comments that things like, wow, like your life is amazing, or you know, you guys are having so much fun. It's yeah, of course we are, but uh, not in that. that I know, exactly. I know, that's <laughs> this is not my moment. house. <laughs> that's a snap of like one minute of my day, you yeah. know, the rest of the time. But I going back to being alone. I mm -hmm. really grown to appreciate it. I love it. Mm -hmm. I love being alone. Love being by myself. And again, I know. And it's the hardest thing, I think. 
that's that's one of the hardest things to, to do. To be I kind of enjoy it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we do. Yeah, yeah of course yeah. you do. I do too. I mean, I uh, I was going through my dark stage as well um, for different reasons, and I left the country for nine months, and it was probably the best thing I've ever done for my life. You uh-huh. know, you just gain that clarity that you're talking about. But the bigger thing is detachment, detaching from yourself from all the things that you think that's important to yeah. you. You know, mm-hmm. so it really helped me yeah. in that sense. Yeah, because you're you're still the same person, mm-hmm. but anything that was kind of I don't say not good, but anything that was like basically not stand out about you, you've kind of gotten rid of it completely. And, you know, you just so seem so happy all the time. So calm all the time. And, you know, I I see you going to that direction that you want to. Mm -hmm. And it's funny. Like, it's like, you just got back from Europe yesterday and you said, I'm going to go back to school and you already graduated. You're already working. Mm -hmm. It's, It's crazy. Yeah, it's a beautiful journey, and the journey is fun, right? But they say that, that nobody grew from the comfort zone, you know? Oh, yeah, yeah, for sure. This is this is what we do every day. Like, yeah. I, this is like simple things, you know? Like, I, I put, always put my dishes in the, the dishwasher, <laughs> you know, one day, I'm like, I'm, not, I, I, I'm gonna wash this myself, you know? Just, yeah. you know, just yeah. small <laughs> things that we do just elevates you to, to a different, different state. Yeah. That's why I feel like I'm a nomad, that's why I can't. <laughs> I can't live in the same place for too long. I go crazy, you know. I need that change to get out of that comfort zone and kind mm-hmm. of new experiences, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I love how how it's like we know each other for, the, for this long, but we're like <laughs> at at the same time we're in the same place in life, but we're in so so yeah so different because yeah. I'm the total opposite. I've been like moving around so much. I just <laughs> you just want to yeah. <laughs> I just want like a mortgage. Like somebody give me a mortgage so I know I'm gonna be <laughs> here for like to... five years. You know, I have <laughs> yeah, somebody yeah. make me stay somewhere because I can't. I That's yeah, kind of yeah, how we I came know. up with the name of the show. Remember, we're like we love moving around, but at the same time we want to be stable. So yeah. we call it nomad, yeah. but land because yeah. we want to just it for it to be a land. You yeah. know, That's yeah. it. it's a dilemma. It is a dilemma. But that's what we're creating right now, I think. Uh, uh, because, like, like minds think alike, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So we we can connect to a lot of people, and then we can make, like, our own island. You know, we, we, we just we don't need to be physic- physically connected always, you know? So yeah, I agree. Just, just a support system that you know that there are people out there that think like you. Mm-hmm. On a that's, soul level. That's, that's, that's mm-hmm. enough sometimes. I hope, we, like, you guys with this show and me with my music and everybody else we can just make that connection happen so we know that we're not alone you know we're going we're going through the same struggles every day everybody yeah, yeah. in every situation totally. so. that's the purpose and we always uh, i mean we kind of came up with the idea of the show based on just seeing that how people connect to our music and our words without you know in just like a three minute thing and then at the same time we have so many conversations that we think you know are interesting and i think like you know people probably love hearing about this stuff yeah and we started developing and to see that side of you where you're freely talking about the stuff that you're talking about because i tried doing a little bit of research on you on youtube man Uh um i'm sure nobody told you what i'm (laughs) what i'm talking about it's just (laughs) i mean i don't no offense to them you you were great you know but just the question you know what i mean like ah yeah. yeah, same, yeah. same. I well, watched like I four of them, and I'm like, what are they that's asking? It was do such interview. a drag. I was like, you have a guy in front of you that's willing to talk about anything, and you're asking him about, like, why does he take his shirt off in an interview? <laughs> oh, <laughs> like, so on terrible. Instagram? Like, terrible. what the fuck is that I shit, know. bro? Yeah, but that's just the different, different, different uh, media, different things. Yeah, you know? There's yeah. not been a show like this. You know, this is, the, this is the reason. There are no shows like this that people can come and, like, artists can come and not be judged you know mm-hmm. yeah yeah um if i'm talking right now because i'm not afraid of get being judged i actually like to get judged <laughs> you know yeah. what i mean mm-hmm. i want people to judge it takes me. balls yeah takes because yeah. if they judge me that means they're looking at some point in themselves that means there's they're seeing something in themselves so let, let them do that you know yeah. mm-hmm. and i don't read comments i don't go after that i just put out the information that i want to do because i don't think if I if I didn't believe in it, I wouldn't say it. So whatever they say is not gonna make me change my mind or like change my point of view about anything. Now, have you got to the place where now you're talking about purpose um, and trying to figure things out? But have you realized? I'm sure you already know, but truly realized on a soul level how powerful your voice is and the things you can do with that voice in terms of leading, in terms of guiding. Actually, that's mm. that's one of one of my weaknesses that I'm working on because I'm, I'm, I'm always been, um, very, very, um, how do you need, very needy of other people's opinions, like my close, co- close people. So I don't have that confidence when people that don't know me, tell me I'm, I'm good or my voice is good. I just take it as whatever, yeah. you know what I mean? But they tell everybody, 
But since you don't have those people that matter to you that say it, then then that's different. That doesn't. That's why I think is a lot is the weakness with a lot of artists right now. They have like uh, excessive confidence because of all these people that tell them they're good for no reason. And yeah. they, they think they're something that they're not. The yes men around them. Exactly. The leeches. Yeah. Exactly. And we don't have that. At, at least I don't have that. So that actually. I'm working on it to give myself that confidence that you don't really need that mm-hmm. too too yeah. much, and that's why I'm like my songs take two years. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because <laughs> if I played it to you and you say it's good, maybe I release it tomorrow. But since I have to work on it and I have to like make it grind and grind and grind, it takes two years for me to get get into that level. Mm. When I, you come to the like somebody that like Erfan that I I trust, he goes and says. He listened to one of my songs. I'm like, this is good. You know, I'm gonna work on it tomorrow. Maybe I can release it. Yeah, yeah. In a few days. You know what I mean? And he'll keep it real if it's not good. Exactly. Yeah. But that's how you know because you know he will. He would tell. He wouldn't tell me if it wasn't good. You know mm. what I mean? That's a big dynamic of our friendship. Yeah, because that's like it's such a big deal to me too. I really identify with what you just said, and I have my go-to's. I have my three, four people that their approval means more than you know all my fans yeah of the situation because <laughs> that's I know how that, it is you know because i feel like they know me better than anybody else and yeah. they know what's good for me more better than anybody else so it's really important and when i make a song and all of them approve yeah it's just like i know this is it like, yeah, <laughs> I, got, I got it yeah <laughs> but especially this guy number one <laughs> <laughs> i appreciate he's that he's the harshest and he he's the harsh. most real you know so Indeed. yeah Thank you, love. And I'm always there for you if you ever need anything oh, from course, me, bro. bro. I'm here, and you're in Orange County now, so you yeah. know we need to see each other a little bit more. We are close, but, but that's sure. that's the thing with our music business too, because there's no filters right now. Yeah, yeah. That's the that's the other part about our dilemma in this world, because we're not in our yeah. in our own country. We don't have the support system. We don't have the fan base that we use. We have 70, 80 million people that know us, and we're just walking in the street. Yeah. <laughs> In Irvine, you know, <laughs> if you tell any artist in the world, they will cry. You know, that's that's what artists live for. Like uh, developers, like real estate developers, mm-hmm. they look they look for like all the hotels they'll build. That's what that's that's what they that's what their pride. Our pride is the people. This was this is where we go. Our fans are the are how many how many people we can get at some place. How many people we can get in, involved and engaged in in one cause. This is our pride and joy of what we do, and mm-hmm. we're taken away. Oh, I agree, man. <laughs> that, that was one of the biggest reasons I never took the music thing seriously and yeah, I haven't been in six years because on a financial point, you know, yeah, I mean, money is this and that, but you got to be able to make a living. But have you been in Iran lately? I can't. We can't. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's, we're getting robbed right now. The generation of our singers, artists that are outside, we're getting robbed because yeah, they're doing yeah. the same thing and Radio Javan is playing all of it. Yeah, when I, when I, <laughs> when I think about this situation of it, it's when I get... Frustrated. Uh, I want to bang most my head. <laughs> no, no, like, I can't. I'm like, this is crazy. I'm like, just making it in music or arts or acting or something is so difficult in any country, right? Like, right? I can't anyway. even go back to visit. Yeah, yeah. And it's then, ridiculous. like, you make yeah. it Terrible. and you have longevity with it. You don't stop. You know, it's not like you have your one hit wonder. We've been doing it, like, I don't know, 13 years. And you just can't. You don't have access to it. You know, everything yeah. that you worked for, you have no access to. And it's it's crazy. I guess. On the bright side of it, though, it pushes the the superstar to become humble. Oh in yeah, some I'm, ways. I'm, yeah. Some ways. I'm I'm thinking I'm, I think I'm lucky, but that was a learning process. And now it's different. You know what I mean? I, if I w- didn't go through that, I wouldn't be this artist or whatever that I'm right now. Absolutely. I wouldn't be this yeah. personality even that I'm right now. You know, yeah. I, I I got I, I, my ass kicked since I was six years old mm-hmm. in Sweden. You know, with skinheads. You know, I, it made me tough. Mm-hmm. You know, I was always watching my back, and it's just been like that. But when we reach a certain level then sometimes i think it's kind of egoistic too because you, you're like going against universe questioning the universe you know <laughs> yeah. like oh i did this much but where is my reward you know yeah. i think it's kind they of got, like, they got skinheads in sweden oh yeah. yeah really oh yeah they killed a bunch of people a few years ago oh, really? oh yeah when, back in the days when yeah. i was there it was bad it was really bad i was like really? the only with dark, this person with dark hair in a whole school and that kind of attracted all the girls like automatically. And I, uh-huh. every day I got jumped by other guys. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah like five, six people would like sit in the back of the bus and ride all the way to my house and kick me outside, outside yeah. of my house and just leave me there. That's probably why Zlatan That's turned funny. into the psycho that he is, right? Who? He's Zlatan? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, he's exactly he's the same background. Yeah. He, But he went like crazy. He's like, all right, fuck me, fuck you. That dude is my idol, by the way. <laughs> is that yeah, right? That dude he's is sick. my, like, yeah. I, I love him. 
<laughs> like I, I follow him wherever he goes. That's the team I'm His cool. <laughs> <laughs> like, And that's good. every year. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But that's we'll something where he'll like, um, end up this year. Though. Yeah. But um, something about Iranian artists who live outside of the country, like me and you, is something different. Again, we were talking about this earlier. How um, one of our artist friends that we know from Iran, I'm not going to name names. Um, he grew up in Iran and he started music in Iran. So when we all lived in Dubai. He had a big problem with not being recognized. You know, when we went to a club or somewhere and he didn't get the love that he was used to getting at the uh, Bakali in Iran. Fuck him. You know what? <laughs> uh, yeah, true no, that. But that's but, the aspect of it. But you know, no, for us, we like that, right? This is the thing. I'm, I'm, I'm sitting right now after all these years and I think I'm being, I'm being too selfish by wanting attention from my own people. And yeah. they get it as, as soon as they walk in the business. You know what I mean? They think they deserve, they deserve it because... And that, that's that's actually entire, guys. Entire but there's business. no filters in our business, you know. Yeah. There's e, there's ENRs like in 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 the American business that listen to music, look at the artist and see is this guy an artist? Is he good? And then they publish their music. But we got like a website that's turning into TV right now or whatever. Mm. The actually people pay them to put their music up. Yeah, what, what kind of music? What kind of music business do you want? Talk that shit, yo. Yeah, I will. <laughs> I will. <laughs> yeah, I will. But because it's hurting us. Mm. Because it's hurting us. It's hurting the business. And all these people they're supporting, they don't. They can't even do what? one concert. Please what? tell me one. <clears throat> Why, what, in what way yeah, do you think it's hurting? I can't think of any. <clears throat> Excuse me, guys. Why are, there, why are there so many concerts? We have a million artists. There's no concerts because they, they can't move. They're not able to jump up and down. And they're, and these sites are promoting the, the, this kind of behavior that you control your artists to tell them what to do, what not to do, what to sing, what not to sing. This is actually like they're promoting it. They're giving it voice. They're putting a, If I was RJ, I wouldn't like... I'm not gonna put this music up from from there because you you can't even do a concert, you mm -hmm. can't even do a proper music video. Why am I am I promoting all this music that comes from Iran? So you think concerts aren't happening because there are too many artists that get out with no filter? No, because the artists that get out filtered, they're they're not artists. Mm -hmm. They're mm -hmm. vocalists. Yeah, yeah. These people are vocalists. These are the same people that stand in Gurhas Root. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, like this, yeah. singing in a pyramid. <laughs> These are the guys. They know how to sing. Yeah. But can they entertain thousand people? No, no, definitely not. I mean, some people are just natural performers. Can, like you, can, can you entertain 2,000 drunk people that are, are out there to have fun and they're paid money? But no, let me ask no. you this, though. I never thought, like, you'd have any type of problems, like, getting bookings every week in my head i thought like your, your demand must be the highest than anybody else is that the case or that is the case but my standards are higher than anybody else and this business they're used to working with people that have no standards uh -huh. yeah true. it's very true that's I mean, the, the demand is stuff. The, the call come come in every week but the m amount of deals they that get made are not that much because they think they can get their way th with me but mm. I, they, they can't you know yeah either they pay my money or i want to cut in the in the show and they're not they're not one willing to do that. Yeah, because then they go to the next guy that's you know is willing to take half. Well, who's the next guy? Sucks. I don't even know who the next it guy is. Matter. We're not gonna name names, bro. They, no, they make it. They make when there's no name. When, when there's no next guy, they make a next guy yeah. up. And then the guy goes, and then <laughs> that's the problem. Yeah, they make a next guy up, and then the first tour he does, everybody knows he's not shit. Yeah. And, and then they come back and they call me again. They don't got, <laughs> <laughs> they don't got no six on. packs, yo. No, it's not about the six packs, dude. It's not about the six packs. It's about this. Um, I started singing on stage when I was 14 years old. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. 14 years old, I was started singing on stage. I had spaghetti legs every week. I would like lean on the mic stand because I couldn't, I, but I did it. It was some. It was a getaway from me. Whatever it was, I did it, and I did it every week. I grinded every week. These songs, mm -hmm. I didn't even like. The Is song. that that place in Sweden that you said Raho was there, and you guys? Because I, I was listening no, to one of the was interviews. Here. It was yeah, but in a place in Sweden, right? Yeah, the place in Sweden was like a, a regular, yeah. like a Persian club, right? That we used to do, and I wasn't even old enough to go. Yeah. So I had to go perform, and I had to get out of there because if the police could came they would arrest everybody and yeah. take out the licenses because i was underage so they could tell that i'm an artist as long as i'm on stage and then i had to leave you know that was that that's, that was the point yeah so for me being on stage is is kind of 
why I do this. Mm-hmm. It's not, not not releasing, not singing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, that expression. He, he's just, a natural, man. He's yeah. a really good performer. I, I truly enjoy watching him perform, you know, and for sure. under any condition, tired, whatever, you know, he comes and he kills it. When he goes on stage, and I keep it real with it, uh, we had a, he had a show with Shad Mayer last year at, at Kodak Theater. Yeah. And we, I, we went and I performed like our song together. And before he, he went on stage and like, you know, he was you know, having a little bit of drinks and he just like, I'm like, oh, wow, he's just going to mm. kill it, dude. He put a suit on. He just went on stage. I had a little bit of doubt. To be, I'm keeping it real. <laughs> <laughs> he just went and he just on point. I'm like, wow, wow. The crowd that's was sick. scary yeah, that night. Yeah. Yeah. Where was <laughs> it? It was good. It was Kodak Theater, packed yeah, house, yeah, 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 full capacity. Yeah, he killed it. Was it. Good show, yeah. Mm. Yeah. And then I came on them, boom! Ah. <laughs> yeah, that was good. That was that was a good yeah, surprise. Yeah, People yeah. weren't expecting cool. that. I yeah. just came out of nowhere because yeah. The first cool. time I heard you was not not actually singing. I think I heard you like doing a verse, right? A rap song, a rap ball, like a sixteen, and in a Black Cat song. Am I right? No, I actually you, sang. No. You rap though, song. right? No, in one song I, I did a little. That was bit the first rap. time I heard yeah, you, yeah. and I was like, that he's song. actually a talented rapper. Yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> you you got the hood elements of R and B singer too, right? Because yeah, I I studied that. I went to school for for soul and R and B. That's 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 my high school. I didn't even know yeah. that. Yeah. yeah. I, pre- I I did music production and soul and R and B singing. And that's why you still school. as big as you've got, you still get stay connected to oh, the R and B and underground. Yeah. But let me ask you this. Um. If you don't mind me asking now, <laughs> you did get recognized as far as on the platform with a boy band. Did you ever have yeah. a problem with like being in a that type of a band on, on, in terms of like, am I going to look bad in front of people? No, you didn't have no, that. Not at all. You weren't no, worried about not that at all because I, I, call, I, I, I ran the show. Mm-hmm. You know, I made sure I ran the show. So I wasn't I wasn't joining anything that was like one one of the problems with the band i was to because i took over and it was like sammy Beggy and black cats it wasn't black cats and sammy Beggy. Yeah. so that's mm-hmm. what the, where the conflict came in mm. but uh, as far as like being in the team that's what i need to do is like i said because i feed off of the energy like right. i do something i don't even know it's good but you tell me it's good then i think about it twice yeah mm-hmm. you know what i mean so in in terms of that I'm, i've always been a team player but the conflict comes when my my personality is like with some people i clash because there's a lot of imitators Mm -hmm. you know what i mean too many and before getting offended that they're imitating me i get offended that they're not learning how real i am and doesn't learn don't know that my success comes from being real and they're trying to imitate something so they don't even really know me you know what i mean that's that's my that's my conflict here Mm. so i don't mind if you want to copy me or like be like me or like dress like me or this but then you don't know that i'm real and that's why this yeah, is being yeah. appealing is either why i buy this anywhere you know you can buy it I, anybody can well buy i guess it. that's because a lot of people are driven by fame you know and i even saw that in the persian rap but this game, is bro. famous people even is that right yeah. i think <laughs> besides fame they just like the whole thing of image and being yourself they don't really understand that no. so when they see For someone sure. else has success they're like that is the path they don't think that it's not necessarily the right path for me so yeah. and they wear the same style of clothes but they look ridiculous because it's not them right it just doesn't look right you know or they see some whatever they see kanye wear something they wear it and it's not you so i mean <laughs> yeah problem but like uh, you, like i do like a shisha high song the six eight song every year right and as soon as i release that like the, the race of six eight song <laughs> and that tempo <laughs> goes, goes like this you know i'm like I waited to do this. <laughs> you know, I waited yeah. to do And they years. always sound good. It's like brother. the New York stuff. Yeah, it yeah. sound good every time. It doesn't sound cheap. Yeah, it's yeah. some swell thought. You know, it's it's like, it's like thought. A, and it's always um, a thing of the past. Like you bring something from the past to today yeah. and you kind of mix it so well. Dude, I really, I really, worked, I really worked on these songs. You know, I, yeah. I'm not shitting you. It's just like I really put time in every word because mm. I'm not satisfied. He knows I play them a lot of songs. I'm like, okay, this is good. I'm like, no, it's not good. This is 50% done because yeah. it, all the words have to make sense for me, you know? Mm. And I can't, I can't. Even I, when I try to have other people help me, it doesn't work. Mm. <laughs> I ask people that are very like established, like writers. I ask them to write and they write me something. And I say, still not me, you know? If I'm going to do it, then it's not going to be me. It's going to show. It's going to show yeah. every word, every tone, everything in the video is going to show that it's not me. So I'm not going to do it. You know? mm. Mm. What's just, working? just be real, man. Just be real. Everybody. I'll everybody be real. <laughs> <laughs> Please. Now, um, I don't know if it was your first song or not, but the way I was introduced to you was before we actually met. 
uh, I was dating a girl back in the day, the MySpace days. It's always about the women. Yeah, you know, <laughs> she's like, oh, have you heard this guy's music? And I was rapping, and uh, he, you know, he sings. He's pretty good. He lives, I think, he lived in Virginia back then. Yeah. Yeah, on MySpace, and it was Sony Amonas too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Amonas, yeah, yeah. And I showed it. I'm like, and because my, my girl showed it me too. I'm like. This motherfucker with six packs and shit. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> the back then too, you know. And then he came down to LA. RMB ass. <laughs> you know? Fuck that. Look at this motherfucker. I got, I got cornrows too. <laughs> no way. It's like that, that, really it's really it's like that Jamie Foxx bit. Look at this motherfucker. Yeah. Yeah. Working out, looking all good and shit. <laughs> that was my Usher era. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but then he moved to LA. We clicked. We started a music video, I think, the first time we met. And then, like, yeah. Or was it about like with Suri? shoot you know yeah. like the last supper shoot that we did and it was your shoot too yeah 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 the, the, crazy. one of your music videos yeah yeah but um I, I, I actually told you I was your fan. I was like I was I was everyone's fan. He did it like show he had a track shows to shoot remember shows to shoot mm -hmm. I was yeah. like ah oh, damn this is good. The fact that you talk about that track it means a lot to me you know because that's like a track that the you know the real fans of the people that oh yeah you know, I love into that my song. lyrics like it you know still so it still that's the yeah. song Man, yeah. Still. It was a f special feeling when I wrote it. Yeah, too. that song always hits the spot. Yeah, yeah and it's, it's yeah. still, it's so, yeah. so, so bad quality, too. It's like, it was yeah. recorded on a tape recorder. Because we recorded it like a, you know at a garage. Yeah, yeah. We we remember with the Where? Asian church or whatnot? At a Korean church. Korean church. That <laughs> was like also the play area. I had these friends, Danny Park, my boy, but he really he helped me out in the beginning. Mm -hmm. They were nice and, kids, um, though. Definitely. Good definitely. Christian kids. And Enoch, this guy, he's actually, he got really famous in Korea. You know, he's like, he does electronic music and uh -huh. uh, he used to do rock. Anyways, we recorded there. It's like fucked up acoustics and everything, but you know, acoustics and well, that was a good song. Like good. That was a good long ass yeah. song too. Yeah, <laughs> but as long as we've known each other, we always like lived in different cities. Except when they didn't uh, have a chorus, right? Uh, no chorus. It was like the beat had a sample in it. But they had it had ding, no ding, chorus. Ding. No, no, it was a, it was an A to Z song. Yeah, yeah, yeah I remember. Yeah, yeah. yeah. had some like breaks in there. Yeah. I swear to God, man. Like I, even the auto tune shit, I started doing it before people. I'm gonna fuck with. Remember that? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but um, but I was gonna say like we've known each other for maybe 15 years, 14 years. Wow. But I lived in OC, he lived in LA, he lived in Sweden, I lived in LA. You know what I mean? But there was a period in du in Dubai that we both lived there at the same time. Oh, we're neighbors, and, man. Yeah, we're neighbors. He literally, I was on the like 38th floor, of the oh, high 37. rise. He's 37, right below my unit. So oh, like, we no. just go <laughs> up and down to each other's house. It was so dope. Let's and hear those stories. We had some wild times. Yeah. Yeah, I'll uh, give you a story. Yeah. yeah. Yes. I'll give you a very yes. good story. Everyone doesn't give us stories. <laughs> I left. I left my house, and oh yeah, <laughs> I left my house and I was coming from Dubai. I had to. I was coming to Dubai, like going back to Dubai, LA, like a few times a year. So, um, I I stayed here for a couple of months, and then they gave me a call, and were like, um. We, we can't find we have to go inside your apartment but we we can't find your key i'm like okay where's the key where's the key <laughs> erfan has your key okay <laughs> what's up erfan uh, i i text him on whatsapp and like, erfan where are you where were you you went you went somewhere don't remember exactly okay he, oh, was, no, he yeah. was out of country he oh, was yeah, out yeah. of country with my keys why with your keys because i'm, I'm gonna tell you why because right. he wanted to play assassin's creed <laughs> <laughs> He took my keys from the lobby, <laughs> went up to my place, took my Xbox, went up, locked the door. <laughs> I don't know if he left left the water open or something. Somehow, the no, no, the water wasn't on me, bro. Uh, okay, I don't know. <laughs> that, on me, man. <laughs> that flooding wasn't me. Bro. I just right. played some. There was a flooding. There was a flooding, and they couldn't get in because he yeah. had the key. Yeah, yeah. So my it's all so my good. stuff were submerged in water for like a week. <laughs> He, You're not exaggerating. No, I'm not exaggerating. No. They, he came back no, no, with the key. True. He had to he had to come back with the key. <laughs> and you went and opened the door, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah what yeah, happened? Yeah. The, the, it was pretty much like water. You know, it wasn't like you know like <laughs> half a foot high. It was like a thing. Flood. Oh yeah, After yeah. After a like, week, it was half a foot high. Because because when he got that apartment, I remember we all went shopping and he bought like all brand new stuff. And yeah, then, um, everything, so was everything was floating. My guitar was floating. Oh no. Yeah. What was the damages? You know, that, everything. everything like we had to redo the whole house remember we yeah. knocked out the wall because the wall was so like so deep in soaked. the water it was like fungus the, oh wa the water was fungus and the p the my rug the paint from my rug was in the water so it was like a swamp it, it was, was like green because green <laughs> oh. his old decoration was kind of like green yeah, yeah, it was it crazy. Was terrible it yeah. was crazy <laughs> the, the tv was floating <laughs> at least he got the xbox out <laughs> <laughs> see it was like all, good, all my perfect. shoes my clothes did everything it, was it, like half green yeah did it did it, did it create any tension 
No. No, you guys were cool about it? No. no, 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 no that's no. funny. I saved the Xbox. You got to play FIFA. Yeah. Like another day. No, but this is the thing. This is the thing. <laughs> like, we were neighbors. So mm. I knew what the fuck is going on. You know, I, 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 know, I know the situation. Yeah, you know? right. We were yeah. like... We would like not sleep or we would like sleep in one one place because the other one was too dirty to go in for a week and we couldn't find the maids. Nobody could go, go in. Yeah. Remember? Yeah. And we were out a lot. And we were like, yeah. So I knew. Yeah, I knew time. shit happened. So what's your uh, favorite place for shows? What city? L.A. Is it? Mm-hmm. Really? Uh, yeah. Why? L.A. is good. Not London. Yeah. No. We had good. I always had good experiences in there. Okay. Always cool. sold out shows. Always good. Always good people. Do you remember what they were? I would, like, that was so funny. I had people from the theater coming to, and because it, it was like four floors, right? And the last floor is like an amphitheater. So like the seats are like angled, you know? So every, yeah. everybody stands up up there. It's kind of dangerous. You know, you can fall down. Yeah. If, yeah. So they were telling me, tell, tell people on the last floor to sit down. I, I can't tell them to sit uh-huh. down. <laughs> what is this? That's this Islamic Republic of Iran? <laughs> the, what is it? Uh-huh. Sit down, sit down. <laughs> you over there. Like, they wanted uh, you to do it? Yeah. And <laughs> tell the band to stop. Okay, tell the band to stop, stop, stop. Yeah, they couldn't <laughs> control people. And they were telling me to tell people not to drink this much. They were, yeah. What? <laughs> yeah. They, t- they told they told um, uh, the manager. Who was telling you that? The people they would just they they, they broke the promoter the, or the venue. The venue they broke the alcohol sales that night. That's so crazy. Yeah, <laughs> it was crazy. Yeah. I still have the well, email. Like, thank you for this. Uh, by the way, we broke the alcohol sales. Da, 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 da. <laughs> like people were walking in and out with like all drinks and stuff. And I would I would see people like man, it was they, crazy. They that come, night was crazy. crazy. They come to concerts to get fucked up, bro. That's yeah, what's up. yeah, they for sure. Things. And I, I yeah. actually Always. that video is on YouTube. I I, I really? put the whole show from backstage from behind me. Mm. The GoPro, I, the whole show is there. That's yeah. pretty tight. Yeah, she yeah. go watch it. That's a good, good one. <laughs> That's you, good. you can see, see people that. standing up there. This is like it looks even dangerous. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and the concert kind of, I don't know if we make it political right now at this point, but the concert kind of died out after his part. <laughs> From all the people who were in the crowd, they were saying that. So I mean, you know, you know, you rocked it. It was fun. Yeah, people left. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah How many people? Do? Uh, about 32, 30, uh, full yeah, capacity. Full capacity. Thirty-two hundred. A lot of people. That's crazy. Yeah, that was a good show. You, you were going to say something? No, I was going to just say, I think it was the first time I'd actually showed that my mom was there. <laughs> so that was, that was, uh, it was kind of special for me too. Yeah, that was a good yeah. one. What, what makes a good crowd in your That's opinion? Because you said the LA crowd, they, they're the right crowd. What does that mean? Yeah, because, um, I don't know, it's just more fun. They know all the songs. Yeah. They look good. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. And the LA shows are usually at a good venue. So mm. people actually put time and make it do an effort to go there, and we are, we are, we usually go all out in in LA. Like it's the best shows. Mm. So, Interesting, because so that's a good thing. I like London a lot, and I like London uh, is good too. Dubai was like that. Charge that mystery show. London good. is the venues. I don't like the venues. I the thing is, I like the city. That's yeah. the thing. You know, the venue. If the concert's good, then I enjoy spending the extra day or two. Yeah, of course, London is in always that city. Good. You know. Above other places, I know you like London. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Everywhere I, have, I can't know, tell. Little, yeah, some put away. It's different area codes. <laughs> Canada could be dope too. Shout out to Canada, huh? Shout out to Canada. Vancouver and Toronto. Yeah. yeah, I love Vancouver and Toronto, but my show experience, <laughs> the both of them, they were not good. You know, it, they just weren't. They, they weren't, and um, I think it's partly on us because of the, maybe the people we worked with. I'm not sure what the situation was, but. Also, uh, again, Dubai, I guess I feel comfortable there, too. And it's large crowds during the Persian New Year. Oh, Dubai is good, too. You know, that show we did for Josh Ambassador, that was, like, really good. That was a really good show. Well, Great weather outside. That first show in Vancouver that we did, that was something, wasn't it? <laughs> that was amazing. It was literally in front of a crack house. Like, I saw somebody with a needle. Like, they <laughs> opened the door, and there's somebody with a needle in their arms. I was oh, like, oh, shit. Wow. Yeah, let me tell you the story, man. It was really funny. So this guy, I mean, he called me, and it was I was like early stages of you know, my my career. I'd done a few concerts. Like clapping with a needle. <laughs> Bro, this guy. This guy said I do I do shows for most stuff. I do this. I do that. Big time promoter. Uh, I'm like, all right. So we set it up. I'm not gonna get into how I they kicked me out of the country. I had to come back and run from the border the, oh. with the GPS in my hand. But. Uh, Scratch that part, you know. Canada's gonna fuck with me. <laughs> but um, anyways, we get to the show, bro. They're like, yeah, we have an underage show, and then we have a 21 and over, 18 and over show. 
The first show, basically, that wasn't promoted at all. Oh, and then drive us with the freaking limousine. Like, all right, <laughs> oh, the limousine. Yeah. You know? And I requested what a was the good number for the pay. They paid everything legit. So I'm like, all right, it's all good. I got my money. And, bro, we go in there. No, do the you remember the limousine, though, before you told I do. I do. They picked us up. We're all, all in the limousine. What, kind what of did limousine? it look like? Was it was the guy. American flag limousine. No remember shit. the Hummer? <laughs> yeah, you don't remember? Oh that? yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> what the yeah, fuck yeah, is yeah. this? Dude, I was picturing myself in an old How movie. How fast the movie. memory? Uh, <laughs> the Hummer, American flag. The entire thing was an American oh flag. What do you mean God, the whole the yeah. whole limousine? Yeah, yeah. And we go to Hastings, like East Hastings. Before rapping was in. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it was it's like the shittiest neighborhood in Vancouver. Everybody knows like, it was East Hastings, if I'm not mistaken. Streets crack the fuck up, crack is everywhere. We go in there with the fucking hem- Hummer limo. Everybody's like, who the fuck are these people? American Holy flag. Shit. We get to it. It's like an old, uh, like a harbor, marine house, like a like a little gym. Like Slash a bo- gymnasium, court, yeah. Gymnasium yeah. type of shit, bro. We, but he just, paid well, didn't show. he? Yeah. Yeah. It's the, for the time? Positive. Usually the second time around you go to a city, that's when it's good. <laughs> because yeah. first time you're all, it's always something happens. So second exactly. time you go with experience. But the shiesty ass promoters, oh, man. Oh, yeah, man. What's up with some of these promoters? Yeah, yeah. we had one. Oh. We had one back in Dallas. <laughs> it was crazy. And this guy was with a suit <laughs> and like all going out and promoting and like, I'm the, yeah, I'm the concert owner and blah, blah, blah. They just this look thing. wrong, yeah. don't yeah. they? And yeah. then <laughs> in the middle of the show, in the middle of the show, it was a huge, like a good, good uh, venue. Yeah. The owner of the venue or the manager of the venue went like, okay, where's the, your promoter? We need to do something for security. And we're like, okay, we're, let's find him. And they started looking. He was nowhere to be found. <laughs> and he hadn't paid like half the money of people, you know, <laughs> the dancers, the, the crew, nobody. Oh yeah, everybody God. wasn't was like waiting. And you travel with a band, don't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're like, where the, where the hell is this guy? You know, he's like the promoter. He's the only, he's a concert owner. He had like three walkie talkies right now. Where the <laughs> hell is it? You know? And we're like looking for him for an hour and stuff and we were like we can't find him and i had my friend with me and he was standing by by the stage looking at the crowd right and he goes like sammy come here i'm like i go there and like isn't that the motherfucker right there <laughs> he changed his clothes like wore a t-shirt like a like t-shirt to be in disguise put yeah. a hat and my sat God. in front of you know, people just to hold control of the venue but not pay anybody so we wanted to go like like go right Holy yeah shit. Holy shit. and we found him and we found him he was like in this guy just like sitting, sitting there, like yeah. we're hiding because it was like maybe half an hour left from the show, uh-huh. and in half an hour he had to like wrap everything up, pay everybody, you know. And we're like, that's the guy, and the bouncers like stepped literally over him and took him by his arms and like oh, lifted yeah. him off his chair and came back. It was crazy. That's crazy man. They gave him an ass whooping right there. Really? Yeah. yeah, because he was he was he was like what was running. he playing? Why did he? Yeah, stay? and they found out that he had like he had not signed like three checks that he get get gave the venue. Mm. He he only signed the first one, and then the third one and fourth one he didn't like sign or he they, like didn't do the mark oh right. So he would know That's like so two of the checks would pass and the third wow. one wouldn't go through. So they got him, dude. That yeah. was so. Imagine this motherfucker's like, oh my god. Okay, man, I changed my clothes, got the cash, about to get out. Then, like, but that's my favorite song, though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know why? Would Cruise he back in the show. I gotta hear. This yeah, because he wanted to like keep control of the yeah. thing. He wanted to be there for the safety. You know, if anything goes wrong, but if not, he would just walk out with everybody. Yeah. Yeah. We it. had this situation in, the, in in London one time. Actually, one of the concerts, one of the guys came and told us the promoter just said. Um, if you don't pay them their money, I split their shit. Like basically they had paid us 50% and there was 50 of it left. So he, he went and told one of the younger promoters that, you know, if you can bullshit them or just give them half the money, I'll give you some extra money. And dude, we just fucking <laughs> lost it, man. Me and Kashi took the guy to the basement. <laughs> we're like, hey man, this is what we heard. Like, what's up? We don't play with this type of shit. You know, he's like, the fucking guy's so scared. He's counting the money. <laughs> I you know when Kashi gets serious. You know Which I mean? show was so, that? The one that... Uh, do, do we want to say it? The Ministry no. of Sound. And that's supposed <laughs> there you to go, be legit. Ministry of Sound. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, I mean, no. It, it, the promoter was a Persian promoter and, you know. What but, is it that attracts this type of character in terms of being a promoter? Dude, it gets to the sh- show night. They have all the cash in their hands. They're counting it in their They want to make money but no like, investment. Oh, but is there a way mm. for me to keep more of it? You know what I mean? And... So, I mean, that's always the issue. For the young artists out there, two things. Always get the 50% <laughs> deposit a couple of weeks in advance. And, you know, I always tell promoters, if you don't pay me the full I get all my cash at in the advance. Site, <laughs> I like that. I like you that. do? Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's the, I'm sure you have the credit for it. I though. have to, yeah. special. I have to do it. Yeah, yeah. I but have to. Always, After dealing with these motherfuckers. Yeah, I've seen, I've seen a lot, man. I've yeah. seen a lot. 
I've yeah. seen a lot, lost a lot of money for this shit. Really? Yeah, so I can't do it anymore. Either just sign the contract, give the money, you have the investment, you know, yeah, or you don't have yeah. the investment. I'm not going to wait for you to make the money and give me. Yeah. But if usually not, they don't <laughs> when they make it. Because if you're not Sammy and you're not going to get 100% of the money up front, yeah. usually, <laughs> I always say, like, at the sound check, if I don't get all the money, uh, I'm not going to perform, you know, I'm yeah. going to stick to it. So, Are yeah. there any good ones? Promoters? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure there are. Like, do you have a guy? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, not even one. <laughs> We're promoting ourselves now, yeah. yeah. And you do promote. a shitload of shows and not even one that you can think of. No. Yeah. There's no. You had something with, uh, I don't know if you want yeah. to talk about it. Don't, if you don't. Like, you had something with management too one time, right? Oh, yeah, they stole my money. It. Yeah, my management stole my money. I, mean, I saw this motherfucker one time. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. He's walking around managing another artist right now. <laughs> Wow, <laughs> so crazy, man. Yeah, yeah. trying to fuck. They don't learn. Else. Yeah, they don't learn. He was basically, he was a manager, so they were giving the money. But he gambled so my money. Much, like, and he fucking just yeah, like, he gambled my money, and yeah. then he told me they stole it in the, they, they stole it from me, in the in my hotel room. Ah, fuck out of here, man. <laughs> yeah, what? yeah, but this is the thing. You can't do anything. You know, I have to put my cash in my pocket, <laughs> and travel yeah, with. Yeah. The, like your fifty thousand dollars, or I have to put trust in somebody, give them the cash to put in an account. A bunch of street guys with you, twenty four seven, like rappers. Yeah, that's what you should do. Bobak was good. Any Bobak? That's what Bobak was good. <laughs> Bobak was good. Before you even got in an argument, he would punch the guy. <laughs> I was like, we're talking. <laughs> That's what happened in Dubai. I was like talking to this guy and then He's I like, heard poof, <laughs> poof and then he was down. <laughs> like, Bobak, that's my cousin. I was just yeah. like, <laughs> Do we want to put that light on him now though? Yeah. So, you know, uh, no, it's okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, so he knows, he, knows yeah. he knows it. He knows it. He knows what I'm talking about. Yeah, Shout yeah. out to Bobak. He might not Shout get into Paris Bobak. fashion. Love you, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He's good. Bobak yeah. is, Bobak is one, yeah, of the, he's missed. one of the OGs. Yeah. He is. That's dope. Yeah, man. But the uh, old, I mean, I'm I love like, this thing. I'm just. <laughs> can I keep this? Yeah, it's probably <laughs> no man gifts to you. Uh, it's part of the gift basket. Yeah. <laughs> now everybody's gonna want one when they come. Like, yeah. <laughs> what did Dog's you guys do done. today? We kind of got together. Like, we played some beats. I mean, I played some of the beats, Dara's new stuff for him, mm -hmm. and um, the songs that I think we should feature on. Did he like it or he liked it? Well, he seems to uh, like them. And mm. he gave, usually he's, he gives his honest opinion. Mm. I yeah. think they're going to be great projects. No, if I I can hear if it's a good project or not, but there's always my I have always my my Preference. points. No, I have yeah. always my mm. points, and I give it to him. You know, mm -hmm. do let's do this or do this or do that. Mm -hmm. It usually works. Yeah, 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 yeah. He's actually the only person that write have written something and I've sing sang it. Mm -hmm. That's it. That's it. In he terms did, of an artist or even a no, songwriter. Even a songwriter. No. Is that right? Yeah, that's crazy. He did, he did Don Yom Alamance, then I did it, didn't change anything, and I just sang it, and then we yeah. did Gahi, and I didn't change anything, and just sang it. That's, That's the true. only person. Were That's you comfortable? Awesome, I never thought about yeah. that. Yeah. No, 100% usually, comfortable? Yeah, because usually it's like that. It doesn't, when I'm singing, I might not be comfortable, but when it comes out, it's like usually, it does, it does It comes out right. Yeah, right? it comes yeah, out right, yeah. so I trust That's him, you know? Because a lot of times, like, dude, I'm, I'm, I'm good with, like, the writing the melodies, and I also, when I'm writing for somebody specifically, like, yeah. I know your voice, you know, so... I write it for you, yeah. then I sing it for you, but I can't sing it. So yeah. you don't get it at that point. Yeah. But when you sing it, you're like, okay, yeah, yeah. yeah that's good. Exactly. I mean, you know, and the I, other thing is that my strong point is not the lyrics. I'm, I'm, my strong point is like the, the melodies that I, I write, you know? Yeah. So I have only this kind of this limited vocabulary when it comes to words. So that's why I can't write. Erfan is good with words, so he can write lyrics for other people maybe i can do melodies for other people oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. that was but another cool. reason why i kind of stopped doing music because yeah. it's been like 18 years since i've been in iran <laughs> i'm almost forgetting how to speak farsi yeah I shouldn't so say our no. no our vocabulary no, is still not the farsi if i put the effort i'll be able to write again <laughs> <laughs> no, you can't, no but it doesn't come naturally the way it used to you know yeah. i get what you mean yeah so when you put that shit together you're like i'm gonna keep that exactly yeah i understand that yeah and you you hear so much so much crap from from inside coming in because mm. it's so easy you know in Iran there's 80 million people mm. and every street now there's a studio and somebody that's doing somebody that's writing somebody that's playing an instrument so Ridiculous. it's very easy yeah. to produce a song you mm -hmm. know what I mean because you have this is your that's the country you know it's like U S you know how many songs you can write here because everybody's this is their language you know what I mean mm -hmm. so what they do is just they just giving out songs you know it's like a mass pro production is like a political thing mm -hmm. i don't mind being political either because this is why they want to shut us up yeah. with pumping the industry with a 
These are people that couldn't even walk in the street 10 years ago. It now, speaking of the political part, have you considered taking the music to that level of maybe questioning things? It's not my medium. I'm not a rapper. I can't. I can't be a rapper though. I mean, Darius had some very strong political. I understand. Yeah, I I could do that. I could do that. But that needs. I can't write it myself, and it has to be something with a good point. You know, I can't be like. It has to be you. Yeah, it has to be me. I don't mind. I have songs that are a little bit. But you're conscious. Like I feel like. Yeah, but this is the thing. I'm not good with words again. You know, Mm. so I put in them lyrically. He's not. Maybe he can do it, and I can sing it. You know, that would be dope. I'm done with that life. Yeah. I'm done with that life. <laughs> <laughs> You're a shadow writer. <laughs> you look like a shadow writer right we'll now. We'll talk about it off camera. <laughs> you, that guy's no, definitely got to talk but about like, that. Maybe we're onto something with that, man. Yeah, yeah. yeah good point. You I mean, we just it. talked about that song today. It's not political at all. Refills. But I think Thank on you the for social making that level, so clear, huh? Like on, on no, no, no. <laughs> that, like because I don't want it to come out the wrong, wrong way when the song comes out. Yeah. But That's that a good song, song that about the the the, the prostitute. You know, I want him to do the hook, and mm-hmm. I think it's gonna come out really nice. It's again one of those things that when I was writing it, his voice just keeps coming to my head. Yeah. And I don't know, I love the story. Did you like that song? Yeah, it's dope, huh? I did. But this is the thing you shouldn't forget: we are, we are in a very vulnerable situation because that's why they are doing this. You know, the the, the reason why they're pumping this industry with music is to shut us up. You know what I mean? So it's negative force against us, and m- maybe sometimes by putting something out there this edgy or political or anything that will actually It'll help their stand. cause you think so yeah that will actually help their cause you know the one of the reasons that we are as popular as we are so sometimes in iran because we don't do as a fakari you know what i mean we don't get involved in other stuff that we shouldn't i'm an artist i should write good songs that make people happy and that's what i do and i do 100 every time mm. you know what i mean i don't get involved politically go to vote on this guy don't go but that's not my job i don't know i'm not gonna be a i'm not gonna be a tool for it you know what i mean but yeah. th- this is another thing it's our opinion about something that's going on in the in in every country like in the, any society that's another thing but we have to be careful you know what i mean first of all we have to do a lot of research before we take a stand mm-hmm. <laughs> you know what i it's mean it's a responsibility to it be in that position yeah. any stand you know what i mean like we know prostitution is going on that's that's a fact mm. but what are we going to tell about it whose fault is it yeah. you know we have to know these things Absolutely. and then attack that properly for it to be yeah. effective and that, yeah yeah that's why specifically i just i decided to tell one person's story mm-hmm. that i know about instead of going about the why and should and shouldn't and that kind of situations yeah. and i mean to your point uh exactly because like, for the elections yeah. basically it was such a hard choice for me to actually talk about it or not talk about it and what to say because i mean i, I would hate for it to a couple of years down the line come out that i made the wrong decision yeah. mm. and i was wrong but I because mean, we have we've had we've had strong songs political songs during the years Erfan has done some mm-hmm. yas has done some mm-hmm. each cast has done some And they were really, really, really good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like every second. So if this yeah. was a normal world, they could, they should have changed something or made this too huge movement. But they're not. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They're being big, good songs, popular songs at the time. But they didn't spark that thing that we're looking for. You mm-hmm. know. So we know yeah. that our medium is not the thing. Or if it is, they're not gonna let it yeah. take that voice. Mm. Yeah. For yeah. Darius, is a different kind of guy. These are personas different. They're listening to him just to get that message. Do you have But any uh, one thing? Mm. Sorry, I just want to touch on one thing. But uh, it's true. But for me, at the same time, some of these songs are special songs because uh-huh. all throughout basically it was it's a piece of history. You yeah, know? yeah. When someone listens to that song in 10 years, 20 years, 50 years, yeah. hopefully, they will uh, you know get a real taste of what was going on in Iran at that time. You yeah. know what I mean? So I mean, I but that's the that art, that, that's the artistic point of it. Yeah. And when you do an artistic move, you should be ready for the worst interpretation and the worst kind of response that you get. Get yeah, that's yeah. art. Mm-hmm. That's better putting all your energy and being ready for it to get shot on. You know what I mean? That's yeah. art. Do you have any uh, hopes of going back? Do you think? Oh, of course, yeah. 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 Actually, actually. You think it's likely? I, I, yeah. I know. I know some stuff that I, I can't talk Everybody about. Everybody knows it when I, yeah. that knows some. Yeah, exactly. So, but but my the things I know kind of make sense. You know, it's, it's like logic. the flat Earth theory. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> it kind of makes sense. The more you look into it. It, the more it makes possibilities sense. that yeah. you see, and for for me because I, we were really involved in the whole the, the whole thing. I was in Dubai when the, the 88 thing happened and the revolution and stuff 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 happening in Iran. We were very close, mm. so we knew um, 
what they know, what they know inside, and we knew what was going on outside. So knowing that and being back and forth and hearing stuff and with the, all the Trump shit going on, and, you know, you getting to know what's going on. I'm mean, doing a lot of research. I don't talk from my head. You know, I just do a lot of research. In it. Yeah. So I think there can be some stuff going on, but it's not, it's not necessarily a big change. It just might maybe the change of players mm -hmm. just to keep the people like busy for the next 10 years and what happened. You know what I mean? So, but that's not nothing new. If we want to get into conspiracy theories, we yeah. can talk all day. And that's everywhere anyway. But as soon as I get the chance, when I know that they won't question me, mm -hmm. I will go because that's that's my po that's my that's my straw. Because some people say if they uh, arrest me, I won't go. If they some say if they put me to jail, I won't go. My line goes even questioning. I just want to go like a free person, not deal with anybody, put, present my passport, be there and come back. Mm -hmm. I don't want to talk to anybody, but I have. <laughs> we have a yeah. five-year five year sentence, both me, I think, and you do too. Really? <laughs> yeah. I, I don't know about this. Yeah. <laughs> I love five years isn't all that bad. Five years <laughs> in Farsi they call it taliri. That means like a probational five yeah. years. Yeah. yeah. So if you do anything that's five years. Yeah. That's and crazy. In jail or just not jail. being able to no. use your voice? No, jail. Jail. Yeah. Great wow. food. Great food though. Great food. <laughs> um, that's why that's why I'm not in the run right now. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I mean I don't know. I really uh, I'm really thinking about going this year and I'm just getting so many different uh, types of responses from people. I don't know what to do. Because realistically, uh, I'm not a political activist, you know, I'm a musician, I'm an artist, I write about all kinds of different things, and, you know, I haven't done anything. You know, yeah, no, but that's it, this is my point, well, nobody has done anything, even yeah. the people that have done anything haven't done anything, but, but I is, feel like if I it's tell a no man land, you know, <laughs> <laughs> that's the no man land, because <laughs> you go, you, you go there, and you just party your ass off nothing when you're gonna come back they take your passport yeah, and you can't yeah. go what the hell I'm put going that back. on the trailer but I think that's maybe, maybe that's the nomad that's, man. The nomad. Maybe, that's it is <laughs> that's crazy maybe if I just explain to them <laughs> I'm kidding yeah exactly hey man, we but just that's the thing radio station. I was, there's two scenarios either they want to talk to me <laughs> or they don't want to talk to me yeah. if they want to talk to me that's my problem I, you know what I mean because nobody knows what happens at, on, on, behind you know, closed yeah. doors. But, yeah. I, but I, <laughs> again, maybe not talking. Yeah, not multiple people, back, though. Yeah. I mean, I'm just going to share ex the experience of a few different artists who's, who, who told me about this. Mm -hmm. That The talking part, when they take you in, I hear good things about that. I hear the person who talks to you is not nice. the guy that deals with the freaking murder or the drug dealer. Um, they just kind of want to talk to you, to have a conversation with you. Like civil They want to get into your head. Yeah, and they're very civil about it. And... Basically, they just want to really get to know you and know what you're all about, you know, and that's what I hear. And again, with people who are unknown, it's more likely for something worse to ha than that to happen. You know, when people are known, yeah, you know, they don't want to make know, a scene. Yeah. Mm. And, you know, well, from what I hear is that they they like take take videos and shit and then they say, you know, first thing, move you do, your life is over. You yeah. know, is that what happened to our friend? A lot of our friends, <laughs> yeah. That friend keeps coming up, and I can't, I can't. I no, there's a lot of friends. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, my friend. No, <laughs> <laughs> uh, that was a professional distraction. Very nice, very nice. I love it. So yeah, <laughs> good stuff, man. How do you so, feel about the decoration that Cash made right before you came? That in? was very good. good. Are you impressed as an A-list celebrity? Uh, hey, I'm the Sabza A is missing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm surprised I wasn't like, I'm not doing the interview. Are, we, are, are you we, kidding me? Uh, <laughs> what's wrong with no, you? I, was, I haven't been here, man. so I didn't know. But that's uh, yeah. his, that was his first reaction. He came in, I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, are, we, are we taking a vote? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's take a vote. I, if we're taking I like a vote, the, I like are you turtle. taking acid, my dude? Like, what is that? I, I, like, don't, I like the turtle. I mean, I don't like it. feeling positive. How do you like the how do you like the chimp like with it. the with the skull? I love hey, that. Man, my mom gave That's me so that. That's so philosophic. <laughs> that See? is nice. That is the, my favorite thing out of it. That's you. me. <laughs> that's <laughs> that's nice. Don't be yes man. Don't be yes. Put that on the album cover. Yeah, that's that's so actually that's nice. <laughs> What? No, I'm kidding. No, I, like, turtle, I like all bro. the pieces on their own. I don't like it with the vibe of the studio. <laughs> it doesn't match. I just want to get out there. Okay, there you there can was take a lot world. more, Remember though. That you can take one piece home today. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, uh, that, that monkey is for sure. The what are we looking on time? Uh, we're like at like an hour-ish. 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 Yeah, yeah. We still got a little bit of time, though. Mm, good, good. Everyone. Cool, man. You want to get deep? Or no? Deeper? On what level? Well, we just got to you know. I thought you, you might have some questions in mind that... 
on your level that deep. That's I usually deep. look for segues when we get there, but um, we can get there. Yeah. You started off, huh? No, no, I'm good. I just thought that since we're kind of running out of time. Sami already started things. deep, though. Like, I, I wasn't like, even expecting for him to, <laughs> to start that raw and that honest. I never thought that. If I even knew that in my head, I would have, like, thought differently. Uh, yeah. I yeah. thought you are going to be much more reserved. Yeah. You know, I didn't see that. We're not reserved. Yet. No, man. Sami, no reservation. Cool. Mm. No reservation. Sami's cool. That's no, no why I knew, like, specifically uh, out of it's all gonna the It's going to be dope. People, people are really going to like yeah, it because, yeah, because yeah. they know... They know who's, who's real. Yeah. Like, it, it goes through cameras. It goes through... It's the energy, you know? Yeah, and you yeah, believe in sure. it, I believe in it. And mm -hmm. it's, it's like invisible energy, and you, we won't see it. Mm -hmm. So why not use yeah. it? You know what yeah, I mean? That's what I was saying. He's a real dude. Easy to talk to. He's going to be comfortable talking. Yeah. And that's, that's my that's Achilles heel, by the way. It's not it's not a, easy to be like this, you know? It's, yeah. That's, that's the, not everybody... This is, like, where, where I'm comfortable, you know? I can just be, say yeah. anything I want. And just be, being around you will look at will make it look normal. You know what I yeah, mean? Yeah. But yeah. think about talking about this stuff around regular people. You know, <laughs> like about not regular people, but people that don't know you. Well, yeah. it comes natural to you. It's effortless. You don't have to like yeah. get into other mode like most artists do. Now, in terms of your, the longevity in your career, because um, that's the only way you pretty much make a living, right? Yeah. yeah. Do you like? wonder like do you worry about where is it going to be in five years or where is it going to be in 10 years can i sustain it or i know i'm going to sustain yeah, but it i i stop at one one step before worrying you know i know the energy of worrying you stop and the thought before the thought yeah i thought I, yeah i stop I, I don't go there so even that if that thought comes it's not from a worrying or from the negative place yeah you know so i put a filter before that i mean i know that thought is going to come but is your interpretation of we're viewing it as a fear or viewing it as as just a thought, you know what I mean? Just the option. As as much as that's an option, another one is an option that I've become a fucking very successful singer, most more six, ten times more successful in the next two years. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I have more grounds for that than failing. Yeah. Now, <laughs> you do, you, know? do you think yeah, about true. like, okay, for I sure. gotta like do business on the side while I do this to make sure I'm good with investments? No, I don't. I don't believe in investments and money at all because mm. I've seen. I've, I've experienced money come and go. Buy a house. Know, this is, buy yeah, a house. I want to buy a house. That's the first thing I want to do. Okay. That's yeah. actually my goal. But it's hard to put the energy into that and then do the artist thing too, huh? No, but the artist thing is what's bringing the money, but it's right. hard not to spend the money back in the artist thing. Yeah. <laughs> it's hard to save when you're... I, I can tell you spend a good lifestyle. amount of money on clothes and fashion, right? Yeah, I spend a good amount of money on living. Mm. Yeah. Like I move three times a year and every time I move, I get new stuff, new apartment, new news, and new, mm. everything new yeah. because I need it. I can't mm. like U-Haul everything across the world, That's you true. know? It becomes more expensive. <laughs> yeah. True. So you have to live like that, you know, that this is a kind of stuff that you have to put money on or like mm -hmm. you have to fly good you know you have to stay good this is, these are th why it's not that because i'm like i like comfort too much because i i just need a bed and a tv uh, you know but know. it takes a toll on you you know you can't compromise on some some stuff so that you can go seven days eight countries <laughs> you know what i mean yeah because that's what we do sometimes how long have you been doing that for um six seven years now Damn, it's a long run. Yeah, I never know where he is. Like, when I found out he's in Orange County, I was shocked, you know, because I thought he's either in Sweden or Toronto or, you know what I mean? Yeah. But, yeah. Go. I, I was just going to say, this is probably the longest you've been grounded in one place. In yeah, Orange County recently. it is. Yeah. It is. And you are trying here, to get I've grounded, here, right? Yeah. I've been here since December. Mm. I haven't left since December. <laughs> people, are, people listen, like, what the fuck? Actually, That's a long yeah, time? I did March. Right? <laughs> December? <laughs> Where'd you go? March, we, I, we went to Turkey and came back for two oh, weeks. Yeah, yeah but yeah. it is, it is, actually. Because I I just I'm my days are like uh, usually if I if I if there's no work I will start planning a trip you know because like mm -hmm. I can't I can't stay in one place like him but I need a I need a house I need a home mm -hmm. you know you need somewhere to go back to yes that's yeah. what keeps you grounded you know mm -hmm. yeah. but ah, true. Yeah. I mean, I'm crazy, but still, after a while now I I miss I want to come back to my base you know yeah I wasn't like that five years ago. Mm. So we are like we're all just living the same same life in different aspects, you know. Mm. But just trying to trying to trying to keep keep sane, you know. It sounds like enjoying the journey, huh? Like, oh yeah. Oh. Yeah. Like, do you take the time to like look or visit the city as you go to all these different places? Not at all. <laughs> no. No. No, because it's I, just too busy to do that. Yeah, it's just too busy, and I don't I don't distract myself. You know, I don't put myself in. It's kind of good in some somehow and it's bad in somehow because you need to get out of your comfort zone. I get out of my comfort zone a lot with people, 
but not physically. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. I put it. I put the challenges. Keep the challenges mentally. You know, I just That's don't good. need to be everywhere and do everything. I don't need to do that. Mm. I can learn mm. by just knowing about it. You know. Mm -hmm. So it's most that. But lately, I think the only thing that's a little bit taking a toll on me as I get older is the loneliness. You know, because you can't communicate with everybody and at the same time you need somebody just to talk to you know just like is it hard for you to find that person because of the position that you're in it's partially about it hard that to trust because you and don't it's know partially because i because i travel so much it's hard to build a relationship when you're yeah, there and yeah. then you're not there mm -hmm. uh, throughout not, it's not about girls it's not a romantic mm -hmm. thing because then you travel together or whatever that that you can you can make that happen but it's just a regular kind of friendships you know what i mean yeah regular kind of stuff that we have mm -hmm. you know That's what I feel like. If I if I would if, if if I lived here like seven years ago, think our bond how our bond would have been. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But yeah. we're not. We're all in the different different places. So think yeah. how we could have bonded together. Not Although that's sure. one of the things I'm learning as I'm getting older is to not really get tied in, into a circle because there's also a beauty of just finding new people and seeing new perspectives because it's also poisonous sometimes if you stick to a four guys it's yeah, beautiful yeah, yeah, the comfort of it but is different, right different purposes people have of course. you know there's a different purposes you know that you have dog for a reason you have flower for a reason at your home, mm -hmm. home you know you need sometimes you just need to vent before putting it into into a filter and you can do it with our fun mm -hmm. you know what i mean yeah you can go say fuck my hair looks like shit today it goes back to That's that base it. thing that you're yeah. talking about Because you don't you don't hold back because you know it's airphone you're automatically in the comfort zone you tell him something you know yeah and that's good sometimes you just need to do something stupid you don't want to do in front of him you can do with other people right that's another thing <laughs> but just having that and it's like for for me my experience with it's not a, this is not a problem that I say okay loneliness is a problem it's been years after years after years and then the career comes on top of it and that adds to it mm -hmm. yeah. you know it becomes a vicious circle circle. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So for me, basically that's been that's been the problem and the way I solve it is by by being more out there, by talking more and finding this little connections that You're I can putting find. your energy out there. Yeah, right. Finding mm -hmm. these little connections that you can find and feeding them. Okay, maybe I connect with him in the, on this level. Okay, let's feed that. You know what I mean? Maybe I connect him with him the, on this level. We don't need to be buddies and go out drinking tonight, but we can sit right together. Mm. You know what I mean? No, so let's do I'm that. going through that myself, yeah. actually. And it's like the more of yourself and your authentic version of yourself that you put out there, the more you will attract of like-minded energy yeah. and the more yeah. you're going to filter the shit you don't want. Yeah. So I get what you mean. That's beautiful. I, I don't know what's going on with me. I mean, I'm in, in such in between. Like, I love my alone times. Mm. I think it's just where I'm at in my life right yeah, now. Yeah, it's right you know, now. I think it's the a changes phase. that I've been going through. It's definitely a phase because yeah. I love being at home, working on music by myself, spending time. Because you're myself. like me, you go from one extreme to another yeah, extreme, yeah. and the <laughs> yeah. tra transition is hard. Yeah. 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 It's, it's yeah. just weird because I, I, I'm at home. I read books, write songs by myself, five days in a row, and then, for example, I, go, I just I just came back from a trip uh, in Greece in Mykonos, and for two weeks. Most people were strangers, and I'm just mixing up with everybody, having mm. such a good time, really partying, and then I come back to my regular life again by myself, loving it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but this is why because you've been you've been in the in the cage. backstage for a yeah. while. Try being active again, putting two videos out there. Then you can't walk around in Mykonos with uh, with just meeting new people. <laughs> 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 yeah. What do you mean? What do you mean? What do you mean by that? You know, you can because you go to a wedding. It's like 150 people at the wedding, right? Mm. You're at the bar to ordering a drink. Can I have a Jack and Coke? Yes, Jack and Coke. This guy comes and says, Hi, Sammy Biggie. Yes, Sammy Biggie. Oh. How are you? <laughs> I'm very good, thank you. Oh, what happened to Shabal and Black Yaz? Oh, fuck. Yeah. Yeah, wait, wait. Okay, when is your next song coming out? Oh, in two weeks. Oh, the video was really good. Okay, thank you yeah, so much. Yeah. And then he says, Bye. The next guy comes. Oh, Sammy Biggie, how are you? Oh, yeah. Well, no, that, that still happened. But the unique case <laughs> yeah, about this was that it's because it was like, you've been, you haven't yeah. been active because you people say, Okay, he's 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 airphone right now, you know, yeah. he's being airphone. He said, Khoda Fezik, that says a lot of things. If you're active, yeah. you have a video out, everybody wants to talk no, no, about no, it. No, no, I got you. Then you I'm can't enjoy you. your friend's you. wedding anymore, you know? Yeah. Because But then... no, this specific situation, there was a lot of... <laughs> He came from there a dark place. There, <laughs> were, a lot of, uh, <laughs> there were a lot of other musicians there too. And we're all like a big circle of friends. And everybody else who was there who I didn't know were like friends of friends. Yeah. So they've been kind of respectful like There's a bottle line and there's an airphone line. There's two <laughs> lines. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. But um, yeah. That shit gets annoying. 
Are, it you, is. are you good with small talk or no? No, uh, not at all. I because all it. this small talk I is the same it. when it comes to me. <laughs> all this small talk is the same. When is the next song coming out? Do you write your songs yourself? Sounds that's like the you YouTube do? interviews I was watching. Yeah, yeah. that's exactly yeah. the same. So and think about it. So they don't know what the last person talked about. They're going to do the same yeah. thing. Yeah. It's yeah. Just, like this, it was redundant. It's something funny. I mean, I guess it's a good, a good time to talk about it. Last week when Pedro was spinning at this place, this guy that I know comes with a guy that I don't know and his girlfriend. And the girlfriend, I'm introducing myself to, to the friend. The girl says, not introducing herself anything. What happened with your ex? <laughs> yeah. What? Yeah. I'm like, I kind of just blew it up. I started talking to the guy. And then she's like, why did you guys break up? What happened? So I go like this to her. I'm like, hi, I'm Erfan. Like, you know, and mm. she's like, what do you mean? I'm like, I don't even know your name. Don't you think that's a real personal question? I got pissed off, you know? Mm. She's just coming at me, asking my relationship. She's like, oh, I'm sorry. And I got away with like, what the fuck? What's wrong with people, yeah, right? Yeah, I don't they're even trying know to say name. we know a lot about you. Yeah. Yeah. That's face. what we know we know a lot about. Or maybe they're nervous. No, no I don't know. They forget that they're real people. No, man. man. It's just... Yeah, they, it's like, it's overwhelming for them, to, you know? To be fair, she was like, drunk too, but, you know. This is one of my friends told me actually something really good and that helped me to not put myself out there because it says if you go out there it's your your problem you can't blame the guy that is gonna see you just once and this is the only time he's gonna see you not to overreact and do yeah. whatever stupid you're living with yourself i'm living with you seeing you every day is normal for me but this guy is being like it's you know what i mean it's like seeing somebody that plays in the commercial event they want to go oh i saw you in a fucking Mr. Muscle commercial, you know what I mean? It's, it's, the problem is a lot of times it's not even the real fans because the real fans they either connect you on a deep level or yeah. they don't even want to bother you. Yeah. Like I've ran into like a couple of my heroes a couple of times. I don't even want to get them out of their zone. Yeah. You know, it's that's just maybe a do. nod and a respect. That's what you and do. And admire from exactly. That's what you do. Because yeah. I already, you've already done for me what I needed, you know, to get from you. So that's that, bro. Yeah. And if I saw Tupac, I go for a selfie though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right now, yeah. Yeah. For sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He's in Cuba, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> Did you watch the movie? I'm full of these, man. I'm full of these. I can just spit them out. Just on YouTube tripping out. Huh? Uh, no, not only two in the morning. You're like, <laughs> yeah, not only on YouTube, but I'm, I'm, I have I have, I have sources. Why Cuba? Huh? Why? Cuba? I'll tell you later. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> like some like uh, sightings, you know. Yeah, that's, that's funny. funny. That's crazy. Have you had encounters with aliens? No, but um, <laughs> but I've had uh, uh. I was in coma for 77 minutes with no vital signs what was two this? years ago. Two mm -hmm. years ago. Wow. So, and I remember everything. Well, for that 77 hours? Yeah, and then wow. there I, I had so alien encounters. Yeah, I, I saw. And you sensed they, it and you traveled or what? Yeah, mm. I traveled and I came back and. Where did they, where did they take you? Actually, I was in, I was just over myself seeing myself. From from out of, out of body. body experience, yeah. DMT. All, the... all seven, all all seventy seven minutes, I was there. And and it's a whole... Now the coma, um, was it induced by um, psychedelics or it was just a body? This is the thing. Meditation. It was on New Year's Eve. It was on New Year's Eve, and my mind was all over the place. Mm -hmm. Like I was like all over the place. A lot of stuff happening in my life, and and we were partying. It was like we were partying for like two three days. And this was like at seven o'clock in the afternoon, and it was like before the, the, the twelve when the New Year comes. And what I remember is I, this is funny. I, what I remember is I jumped on my friend's couch, and I don't remember anything. It was like a hole that you jump in, and your feet doesn't touch anything. You, you were just, floating. Yeah, no, you just yeah. went in. Oh you know? yeah, I just I jumped up, and when I came down, my feet didn't t touch the wow. thing, and I felt. A pain in my chest okay and um i immediately came out of my body and i wow. i was laying down and i saw these three big beans uh, people might laugh about this and i saw these three big beans and i couldn't see their face because they had robes right but i'm seeing myself like be by beams you mean there were beings just... beings like, like creatures beams. oh three beings yeah, okay. like cre creatures like Skeletor, like he has like a robot. Yeah. Yeah. And were they like light up or? No, black. 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 Wow, that's crazy. Yeah, and I was laying there and then one of them, two of them were standing over my head and one of them kneeled and started looking at my tattoos and I could, even though I was out of my body, I could feel the finger. So he went up from all my tattoos and started like identifying me, you know, like is it him, is it not him? So when he came to this one, um, I saw him, like he said, it's him, right? 
And then the one that was over my head had a big stick with a hook on it. Mm -hmm. He put it right inside here oh, and started dragging. And that's when I felt pain, you know, out of my body. I, every time he was dragging, I felt this pain in my chest. And the pain would like be intensify, 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 like a beam, you know. I would see the color go like red, reddish, pink, pink, pink. And then it would what go the and then it would turn white and then the pain will go. I would like the best feeling in the world. I would like be free of this euphoria. pain. Euphoria. Euphoria, right? right? Wow. Such a contrast, huh? Yeah, yeah, and when he pulled it, that would the pain will come back. And I would like endure during the pain because I know what I'm seeing. If this clock thing goes, and the pain will go will go away. But they came, they keep coming like faster and faster, right? It was so bad. And at this time, I'm laying on the floor, and my friend is in the room. He saw me like motionless. So he's like sitting on the floor. I'm, I'm his, He's like hugging me and I'm laying, laying down, right? Mm -hmm. And this, these pains are more in intensifying uh, to the level that I go, I can't take it anymore. You know, I, I, I'm, I'm, I don't know, I'm going to let go. And I'm talking to him, Wow. you know, I'm talking to him, but he can't hear me. He's like, call the doctor. He's telling his wife to call the doctor, call the ambulance. And I'm telling him, why are you calling the ambulance? These motherfuckers are taking me. The ambulance can't tell, help me. He's dragging me. What's the ambulance going to do? You mm -hmm. know what I mean? So... And then, uh, he, uh, and when I was ready to like say, oh, no, fuck it, I'm done because the pain would like, just came faster and faster. You know, every time he was like pulling it harder. As soon as I, I was like giving up, then my, everybody I know in life, their faces started going past my face. Just flashes. Just flashes. Like all the faces. Was I there? Okay. Yeah, actually, you were there. Everybody no, I knew, all my friends, Bobak, everywhere, like in a circle, like pop, 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 naked. Was I first about No, just the face. Right. Do you know the um, the Pharrell, the Pharrell video? Happy. She's sexy. You know, <laughs> when it's all, only the face. You know, yeah, it's like yeah, a black, yeah. and it's just only. And they're the just face. flashing, they're quick just style. Just flashing by, That's yeah. That's crazy. Okay. And it's flashing and by, and then it stopped on this friend that I was was hugging me. Wow. Ashkan is one of my face. best friends. Yeah, he stopped there. And, and something told me, motherfucker, are you being selfish right now? You want to go and feel free and everything? What about this guy on New Year's Eve? He's going to lose his best friend in his, in his arms. What the fuck is going to happen to his life? This is the first thought that come, came into my mind. And then his girlfriend, they were getting to, about to get married. They were like, we were all partying and we had such a good time all these days. We were like meditating. Everybody was good. So we had candles everywhere, New Year's. Sounds like the vibe was right. Too. The vibe was right. I couldn't go, you know, because I was I was ready. I was like, dude, this pain can I can't do this anymore. And I I'm seeing that body, and I'm not going back in there. This guy's dragging me. Let me give up. So you want to chalk that up to the near death experience, or what do you think? Oh yeah, was I was it? gone because I woke up with the ambulance over me, uh -huh. and they already shot me with adrenaline. Okay. Oh uh, wow. Not the CPR just yet. No, yeah, the, the entire th they they shocked me five times. Oh, they sh oh wow! They, they shocked oh. me five times, so my both my my uh, elbows were, uh, both my shoulders were out of place because they shocked wow. me. Wow, that's they crazy! Yeah, and they even gave me this that, was this year, um, two thousand fifteen. Two thousand fifteen. Fourteen wow. to fifteen. New Year's from fourteen to fifteen. So when I woke up, this is the funny part. When I woke up, I had I thought there was an IV in my hand. I didn't know because I woke up. I slept like this, but I woke up in this position and with my friend on top of me because he was crying because I was done. He was uh, hugging me from my back and crying. Mm -hmm. And the paramedics were like pushing him off because we have to take him. He's done. 77 <laughs> minutes. We shocked him five times. We gave him adrenaline. He's not coming back. And then I opened my eyes. And wow. I opened my eyes. I see two boots. <laughs> I see only two boots. It's cop boots, you know, with the thing. And I just... Stand up and I'm. I feel like I feel fine. You're fine. Totally fine. Wow, like, shit, it's amazing. Like I have this energy. Wow. And before anything, I started moving my arms. I'm like, dude, this uh, these shoulders are off. But I just could reach enough to take this. And I thought it was a small needle. I took it out. It was a whole fucking tube going on my arm because it was adrenaline, right? I took it out. So and my face was half my face was like all battered because my friend he got panicked. He was slapping me so hard. To wake me up. Oh man. He panicked, you know. He was like, Sammy, 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 one side of my face. What the fuck? I'm like, what, <laughs> wow. what you did? <laughs> yeah. Did the New Year's party continue after that? Or yeah, I did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. Did you take it to another all level? Yes. I, all those drunk Dude, people there. I sure. got up. There was I got up, 
ran, ran to the bathroom, saw so my face. I washed my face, and the paramedics were working. We have to take you in because we already as a call. Right, we have to take you the in. The responsibility. Yeah, I'm not going anywhere. I went like, I'm not going <laughs> anywhere. I have a personal doctor. I would call him, and they were like, I want like this New Year. You're gonna take me to emergency, and the doctor's not gonna see me until two days. You know? Yeah. Now let me ask you this. Um, did That's that have story. any type of effect on you, like in terms of? Because yeah. a lot of people changed when they my have, life, dude. It did. That changed my life. So do you feel like a lot of what you're going through in terms of like oh, yeah. healing that's, 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 comes from that place? Yes, that's that's. The it's the rock part. bottom that they talk about a lot of times that's where the, people have. That's that. the connection. That's the that's that that's the UFO connection that you get. Or it's, it could be anything. And if somebody's listening right now and they don't speak this language flu fluently and they're judging you, first of all, I want to say I speak the language of love, but I could tell them, "Fuck you." Go research near death experiences yeah. and kundalini experiences and awakening and stuff like that once you gather that knowledge and then come back and judge another person i think a lot of people yeah, because i respect it. you so much for freely talking about yeah. that because oh, yeah, sure. these kind of things come with consequences and a lot of judgment but people aren't aware and because of their ignorance they're going to as try long to as you're fingers. real nobody will judge you in a bad way yeah. well that is yeah. one of our goals yeah. with this show to be able to expand not just talking about the music stuff and yeah. everyday life but to talk about those beautiful experiences that, yeah, that you was, honor us with sharing man so was, thank you for that yeah, it means yeah, a lot bro thank you but that's oh, what yeah. i'm what i'm trying to like after that my life totally changed because then i've, I've started like thinking more and like of course and my friend he wouldn't talk to me for six months he was mad at you he was shocked mm. two days that this is new year's on the on january 3rd i had a show in malaysia think mm. about it sweden to malaysia with that face i went to malaysia and did my show and my friend tagged along you know like i'm not gonna let you <laughs> let you be because for for the people that were there they were so traumatized they saw some oh, things yeah. that i didn't see when i woke up there was a table like this, just as sturdy as this, was in half. Broken in half. One side was here, one side was there. Huh? And I didn't remember anything. I would slam myself because I every time they would drag this, it was like a seizure I got. Wow. So I would just jump up and like, but I didn't I didn't feel it because I was looking from over, you know. But my friend said you were on the walls. You were like putting your head. Do you have any fear of going to that state again? Well, not at all. Because it not was, at all. it felt. Not at all. Because this time, this time I, I don't think it's easier, right? You yeah, know, this time there. I it's won't have the good. flashes because I've I've tried to be. That was the flashes I got because I had unfinished business with all the people, mm -hmm. you know. Erfan came because I still needed to be with Erfan. You know, I still still needed to time with Erfan to know him more to be to be. You know, that's why he came. He came because I still needed to solve another. So another everyone issue. that you saw, it came for a specific purpose. Of course, they, they had did. to be in your life. I don't mind. I might not remember all of them, yeah. but that means that I still have shit to do. But this time, I think there will be less and less because my ways have changed. Do you find yourself trying to chase that experience? No, 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 no. But Kundalini. But I, I, I will, I will love for it to happen. You know, that's why I, I, I I'm not afraid of anything. I you can know. take you places. <laughs> yeah. You should. <laughs> yeah, because I'm not, a, I'm not, a, I'm not afraid of that that state. Mm. It's just a pain. You know, because mm. anybody, if you talk, talk about death for them, um, they see it as something painful. They, they, they see it as bleeding and stuff. Well, that's why people go to Amazon and do ayahuasca, ayahuasca right? Exactly. The biggest thing about ayahuasca is to look at death in the eye. Yeah, and I you mean, come back. Go through that fear mm -hmm. and yeah. then live life after death. Yeah, that's what we do. That's what, yeah. That's so, that, that's what happened to me, basically. I'm afraid so of that. When are, when are the I'm sure you are, uh, but when are I didn't drink it. It came to me, you know. I, I might not have done it, but now I will. But back then, maybe if they told me to drink it, I would have. That's beautiful. Yeah. Thank you. I was just going to say, when are the three of us going to take that trip? <laughs> <laughs> Anytime, dude. Anytime. Ayahuasca, man. I've seen like some cool videos on it, you know. Mm. But, I, I, I feel like I still got some work to do before I get to that state. Yeah, it seems yeah. extreme. But, but I think by but I think we go there. We go there in 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 small small periods every day. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. I can cuz I I haven't had ayahuasca, but I've been there. So I've been to the other side. Yeah, of course, yeah. So I can I can I can relate when I see similarities between the feeling that I'm having right now mm. and that feeling. You know what I mean? Yeah, mm. So yeah. it's like early mornings. You know, early mornings when you're just waking up when the first light puts you put goes in your pineal gland that's that's one of the feelings or when you meditate when you meditate for more than 15 minutes you have you've done this right mm -hmm. when you get a hold of your breath and do you know when the people that meditate know this is 
just like this how it's, it's like a bubble when you meditate you can meditate for like 15 minutes nothing will happen yeah. you know you know this right nothing happens you're just aware of everything but some bubble goes off like this and then all of a sudden you're somewhere else right mm -hmm. that's the place i was telling cash about that last night i was like my meditations now they're not what they used to be man it yeah. takes me someplace you know yeah. and i love it that's it's, the place it's beautiful that's and exactly it's very euphoric place. that's exactly the place you know but hundreds mm. but time hundred mm. because you have no physical connection when you're around. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. See with me Nothing right to now, pull you back. I have this, uh, my mind is always racing bro, nonstop. That's why through meditation, I try to handle that, try to manage it to a certain extent, but you know, it's still like after 10, 15 breaths, it takes me somewhere else where I don't want to be. Yeah. And I kind of pull myself back in. But interestingly enough, I, have you heard of like a Kundalini yeah. experience? Yeah. I got that one time and I didn't even know I got it until like when I talked to him about it a couple of months ago and I described it to him. He's like, dude, this Oh yeah, the like way it happened was I was trying to explain like what a Kundalini experience is and mm -hmm. I was halfway through my story and he just finished the story. Yeah. I was like, yeah. what? Well, and he didn't even know what it was, but he yeah. had a crazy experience. It was the most beautiful mm -hmm. thing that ever happened to me and it was a crazy feeling and I, and, I, and I told the people that I was with at the time and they didn't get it. They what the fuck are you talking about? You, know, yeah. you, fuck, you fuck up. But yeah. um, anyways, yeah. But a beautiful, beautiful thing about that is a switch. It is a switch. <laughs> it is. It's a switch. Yeah. You can go there anytime you want. Yeah. But the but the secret about that is, there's there's intention goes more than more than action. You know what I mean? It goes faster. The of speed course. speed of intention is faster. So before you want to do it, you know that you want to do it, and the universe is you're gonna do it. Mm -hmm. So actually, not fooling yourself when you meditate is the first thing to you know what i mean because the first thing you do is going to you're going to tell yourself okay i'm in a relaxed mode <laughs> but if if you're telling yourself you're in a relaxed mode then you're not in a relaxed mode you know what i mean so it's it's about the breaths i yeah, that, that's, yeah it's about disconnecting from whatever your mind's doing and just like you know but what i think is mostly is like the same thoughts that take you out of the meditation i think these are the thoughts that you have to deal with in your real life yeah that's true. You know what I mean? It's just like anxiety. I used to be very afraid of anxiety, but now I try to listen to that voice of anxiety. Yeah. You know, I and always... Go towards I, it. I, 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 the analogy that I use, it's like the kid in Sixth Sense. Remember, he first saw all these dead people mm -hmm. and he was so afraid of it. Yeah. But once he stop looking at himself as a victim and he's like let me see what they're trying to tell me yeah. he becomes in a powerful position he listens to it and he responds to it because yeah. they're trying to tell him something they're trying to help him out yeah. you know and that's how we got to deal with those situations yeah, yep. good, good analogy bro i like that thank you yeah i've so thought about that i've written papers on it so, <laughs> so, so that's maybe a sign for that's maybe a sign on giving giving you clues on what you have what you absolutely, have to deal yeah, with you know? absolutely but at the same i'm not time. letting you meditate you know <laughs> the, the thought is going i'm not gonna let you meditate until you deal with you me. deal with it but yeah. you're trying the, to go higher is a lot yeah. of it is like shit that you can't deal with right then and it's pointless to think about at that specific time but you of can't course. help it and a lot of it is shit that it's not real anyways you know what i mean but yeah but do, just, you, do you, you have to deal with it but do you, do you believe that like spirituality and all this, this stuff is like steps you can't skip a step yeah that's why everything like this happens. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I think when, if if something drags you out of out of it because you're not following every step, you're somehow cheating it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Don't think. The first law of it is don't think. If you're even thinking and then you're you're complaining why it's getting you out of your meditation. You know what I mean? Because yeah. it's a basic laws. Or you might go there, but you won't have the understanding of yeah. why you went there. So yeah. in other words, then what's the point? Exactly. Because some people that do have awakenings. They're not ready for it. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I was telling her if that I did, keeps coming until I understand what it, why it is. You know, I went, yeah. I did Tai Chi yesterday and mm -hmm. I ended up talking to the master guy or sensei or whatever you want to call him. And he talked about going through that stage and, you know, he, he's been dealing with it for the past 12 years. He yeah. wasn't ready for that type of shock. He didn't understand it. He's trying to adjust to life. He's losing friends. His wife's like, what's going on? I have two kids. Now I understand life on another level, but do I want to quit my everyday job to pursue a spiritual path so it yeah. takes some time but that's funny about yeah. tai chi too you know because that's chi you know yeah. that's the energy that is also the same so thing. you know what this is, this is why <laughs> he's been training to follow follow the movement right mm. that's what tai chi is he's been training for 20 years to follow the movement and become the wave mm -hmm. now he's learning that actually to become the wave sometimes you have to be an obstacle for it to know the wave because Absolutely. if you're one with it you won't even know where the wave is mm -hmm. when you are so you have to be an obstacle this is your, this is my point with the comfort zone thing you know what i mean mm -hmm. because if i'm and i love how we're bringing it full circle to the yeah, beginning of our talk because if, I, if if i'm just me and i'm comfortable with it and i think i'm okay mm -hmm. you know what i mean 
then there's no there's no there's no, no, no there's no movement in me you know what i mean so by meditating this is the thing by meditating you should this is the first first thing that you should know that you first is first of your oh, you're opening yourself to everything absolutely you know what i mean everything non-judgment so, mm -hmm. so that that thought that you that we have that takes us out of um the meditation might as well be a thought that keeps us in it <laughs> you know what i mean so it's before that you don't have to meditate I think before we meditate, we have to solve to solve some things and then go into meditation. Even you know what I mean, or we meditate to get those things to pop up. So and then come back and solve them. Yeah, Absolutely. that's what yeah. I mean. That's yeah. what I mean. So it's an everyday meditation. So we try to connect with our higher self, with that you know that core, that energy, and then once we hear it, we listen to it. Meditation is like still water and then a, a, a little drop of a stone creates that ripple effect yeah. yeah you know that's what that is so that's what we're trying to do but you want a deep we got deep man so that yeah, was for, yeah, for, yeah. Sure. for manifest good say, like, <laughs> since we're on the subject for me <laughs> when i do like, physical activity if i do a hike or if i do yoga like intense yoga it's so much easier to meditate after because yeah. i just mm -hmm. I have this it's very scientific peace, it's, but, yeah, it's serotonin I'm like because i've already spent an hour of my time not thinking about the shit that you know is going to keep, keep coming to my head and it's much easier to focus and relax and get to that state well that's why kundalini yoga is the answer in my opinion because you do the physical activity then you do the hardcore breath work mm -hmm. and then it becomes so easy to just be still and that meditate. breath work that's what i need to get into mm. really yeah i think we're running out of time aren't we yeah i mean let's close all right it. you want to close it down yeah sure thing sami Thanks so much. Yeah, man. Man. Thank, Thank you so much. much. It was an honor, my it brother. Was, it was Thank good. You, it you was blessed good. us with your yeah, presence. Yeah. Yeah. Cheers. Besides nice. the great Cheers. conversations, uh, it was just so much fun. So we're going to have you back hopefully soon. I love it. I hope hope you guys keep on doing this and I'm going to start listening to this. <laughs> <laughs> and you're <laughs> always welcome right, to come brother. back on the show uh, whenever you want. You'll, we'll be honored to have of you, man. Course, I would love course. to have you back, man. Thanks for coming. Thanks, Cash. Ding, ding, ding. Cheers.